All right, welcome to our code review for this mouse clicker counter. Um, so first of all, we take in the PS2 data and clock. Um, and if we go down here, we can see that at the negative edge of the clock, we look at what PS2 data is, and if it's 1, then we set a flag to 1. If it's 0, the flag goes to 0. And then we go, um, another always block looks at if the, when the flag changes. Um, and we'll begin incrementing uh, the counter every time the flag changes. Uh, right, and then that data counter, if we go back up here, uh, is divided by 11 to give us the click counter, because there are 11 bits, 11 ones in uh, every time you click and every time you press and release. Uh, a mouse click, 11 ones are sent. Uh, and then that number uh, is sent to the LED. You see your LED number and then down here. Um, and then the seven segment display can either be this click counter or um, the data counter and the uh, clock counter uh, can be sent to the seven segment display down here, which uh, Thomas will now explain. Right, so we have the finite state machine. Um, we modified the code um, from uh, Lab 3, um, the provided um, counter tutorial. Um, so we now have a 32-bit number instead of a 16-bit number um, that we're inputting into the finite state machine. Uh, cathode and anode are the same, clock is the same. Um, so essentially we um, have uh, the decoder running um, and taking the 4-bit number and turning into the, the cathode um, output for the 7 segment display. And then um, we have a loop here, uh, always block, and um, we increment the state by 1. Um, and depending on what the state is, we have a case statement or a mux, um, and it goes through each anode, so it lights up each um, of the eight um, parts of the seven segment display one at a time um, and it sets um, the appropriate four bit number depending on the correct part of the 32 bit number for that part of the display. Um, basically we just changed it to use all eight parts of the seven segment display as opposed to just four. And then here we have the clock divider. Um, we have an input clock and then uh, output clock and we add a parameter, so now we can divide the clock by any number um, that we want. Um, and uh, the code is pretty much the same. We have an always block. Um, we begin uh, incrementing count um, every time the, the positive edge of the clock, the input clock, we increment count by one. And when count reaches a certain number set by our parameter, um, we flip uh, the output clock. All right, that concludes our code. Hi, so for our project we um, used the mouse as our input device and we made a counter using sequential logic. So whenever we click either the left or right mouse button, the uh, seven segment display increments up by one. So that's the um, left mouse button. And you can also see the LEDs are showing the binary number. Um, the seven segment display is showing the hex decimal number. Um, and the left mouse button increments up by one. It overflows to the next um, next display, and then the right mouse button does the same thing. We have a reset, so you can reset back to zero. Um, and it counts up again, and then we also have uh, an option to show the data that the mouse is sending, um, uh, PS2 data. So if I click that, and I click once, that's the data the mouse is sending. And then um, yeah, you can just switch back between the data and the clicks at any point in time. Um, yeah, and you can see that this is the binary with, if this was eight, then it's zero, 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 and then the fourth bit is lit up, which would correspond to eight. All right, and for the uh, challenges from what we experienced in this lab, um, originally we wanted to program to flash, but that did not quite work and ended up breaking the, the code for some reason. Uh, so we decided, as for the surprise feature, to have it be able to display the uh, the clock and the 
the data and being able to switch back between the two. Um, and there's also the LEDs, which were added mostly for debugging purposes, but you know they're, they're nice to have, I guess. Yeah, so then um, the problem we ran into when we were trying to interface the mouse with the FPGA, um, the sample code we had um, specified like a certain waveform um, for the mouse um, inputs, like the PS2 data. And we found that that did not correspond to what we were getting when we were using the mouse. So we couldn't determine like the location of the bits, like for a given click or a given input. So what we had to end up doing is we know how many bits um, were sent um, when we did a left or right click, and we just divided that number um, by the number of bits in order to increment the counter by one.